Dorimark's discovery of, of uh, Oslo integration happened when he was working in, in an experimental study with rabbits. The year was 1962. Brunemark was different from uh, most researchers in that he immediately saw the possibility to use this discovery that he had put in um, uh, an implant uh, in the leg of a rabbit. You can say that the biological principle, the fact that a piece of titanium, which is a metal, does adhere to bone or vice versa, the bone adheres to a piece of metal, which at that time was unacceptable, but he discovered it with his uh, light microscopy in rabbits. And then it took him quite some years to go for dog studies and he used implants in the dog. He did uh, rehabilitations of dog after making them edentulous and then he went to patients. Just dented implants in general were regarded to be perfectly impossible by dentists. Just placing dental implants was regarded almost a blasphemy and they reacted violently against Brennemark. When in 82 we started to treat the first patients at uh, Leuven University, I remember because I was also teaching uh, medical ethics that people say, you go for oral implants? No. You're not serious. I said, no, but this is different. So yes, we had to go, but our problem was small compared with the problems that P.I. Brunemark had. He understood the potential of osteointegration. And I think it's time to recognize that P.I. Brunemark paved the way and brought osteointegration. He was surrounded by a wonderful group of collaborators, I mean, both in biology and in, in surgery. And uh, he had also an uh, exceptional nurse, Barbara Brunemark, who became his wife afterwards. All this has contributed uh, to, to the success. Well, I think it's a, a great story and few uh, discoveries have had such an impact on the life of so many people, millions, millions of patients.